Hello, Hemlock, Hemlockers. Jesus Christ. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Hello, Hemlock. This week, I'm going to be talking to you guys about my pick for Hello, Hemlock. I chose Essex County by Jeff Lemire. I had read it before, and I remember loving it, and I jumped at the opportunity to read it again and to force myself to synthesize some thoughts on this beautiful, sensitive, emotive trilogy of interconnected novellas set in the bleak, stark, sparse, but ultimately hopeful and interconnected place called Essex County in Southern Ontario. So let's get going. What I really want to focus on for Essex County is the question of what does hockey in Essex County say about Canada as a nation? Why do we like hockey so much and how is it dealt with in this amazing, excellent book? So we all know hockey is a huge part of Canadian identity. I'm not a sporty person, obviously, my body is a train wreck, but even I know like who Matt Sundin is or Wayne Gretzky, she said, listing the two most famous hockey players in the nation. Regardless, I've been to the games, I know the names, I even have some autographs. It's kind of inescapable if you live in Canada. Why is Canada so nuts about hockey? What gravitates us to this strangely violent winter sport? Lemire opens up book two in Essex County called Ghost Stories, my favorite of the three also, with a quote by Stephen Leacock about hockey. Here's what Stephen Leacock has to say. Ahem. Hockey captures the essence of Canadian experience in the new world. In a land so inescapably and inhospitably cold, hockey is the chance of life and an affirmation that despite the deathly chill of winter, we are alive. Stephen Leacock in Essex County. Basically, we assert ourselves over our horrible cold landscape and feel hope and we feel vitality. And that sort of works. In uh, volume one, our protagonist, young Lester, his room is covered in posters of equal parts comic book heroes and hockey players. The two are placed on even ground as national heroes, symbols of hope for a boy who's had tragedy hit his life. Here's Lester's room where you can see that he has hockey and comic books. Filled his room with this to make it comfy and happy and stable and safe and inspirational. The two are on even ground. At the beginning of the book, hockey players and comic book players are both set up as Canada's heroes off to save the day. But as the book goes on, it's clear that though hockey can unite us, like everyone in Essex County loves hockey. That's how that they sort of uh, form community in some ways. Hockey also has a really scary, violent side. A main character named Jimmy LaBeouf, his backstory is that he was a really promising hockey player, but he got injured in his first major game and he's come back and he's not the same. Uncle Kenny tells Lester to be a little weary of Jimmy because he's different now. And he's different because of hockey and how violent it is. So even though Stephen Leacock likes to say that we like hockey because it means we assert ourselves over the landscape, what he doesn't mention is that in asserting ourselves over the landscape, we're asserting ourselves over each other at the exact same time. This is a violent, brutal game. People get very injured in hockey and it's not always just frivolity and good sportsmanship. It gets real. What I really liked was that in volume two, Ghost Stories, Lemire does very interesting things with how intimacy, violence, and hockey all work together in a twisty web of Canadianness. So here's the plot line. Lou and Vince are our brothers. They're both competitive hockey players. And we're getting told the story from Lou's point of view as an old man. Vince has died at this point. So here's the little episode. Lou and Vince are playing hockey on the same team. Lou knows Vince could play harder. So he shows how well he knows his brother by picking a fight with another player, purposely losing. This makes Vince play really, really hard. He scores two goals. He gets a ton of buzz and they win the game. And the panel reads, he was unstoppable like a bull. And we see Vince charging down the ice. So why I point this out is because it shows how violence and intimacy really work together on the hockey field. Lou shows how well he knows his brother and he shows how much he cares for him and how much he wants him to succeed by picking a fight, by getting injured, by purposely getting hurt on the hockey ice. The two really act as in tandem forces. You can't really get one without the other. And Lemire really hammers this down because he repeats the exact same words later in the book, but with a twist. Basically, later in life, Lou remembers a moment where he and Vince are older. They've been distant for a number of years because of a secret betrayal that I won't spoil for you. And Lou tries to repeat the past. He tries to manipulate his brother's emotions the way he did on the ice and get him to succeed and connect. Ultimately, that's the goal, right? But it doesn't work because they're not intimate anymore. They're not close anymore. Basically, Lou says something to get a rise out of Vince and we get the exact same words. He was unstoppable like a bull. And we think, great, they're gonna connect again, right? But no, there's no more intimacy between the two. And the way this is displayed is through a conspicuous lack of violence. Lou wants Vince to punch him, but 
but Vince doesn't. And that symbolizes how, how distant they are. Because of the way hockey has socialized Lou and Vince by tying closeness to violence so intimately, when one exits the scene, so does the other. So the relationship between Lou and Vince and how they need violence in order to be close really nicely mirrors hockey's relationship to Canada as a nation. Hockey is a mean, scary, violent game, right? And you wouldn't think that a meek, polite nation like Canada would use that as the way that we all connect and unify and become nationalistic and patriotic and all that. But we do. We need the violence to stay close in the same way that these brothers do. There's a wonderful scene. The two brothers feel isolated. Lou's all alone in the city. Vince is all alone in the country. But then you see the panels interact and show that they're united through hockey, right? Like this is where they unify into a cohesive whole. That's how they connect through the hockey game. So it's not a completely comforting connection as we've seen, it's violent and it hurts people, but it is a connection that works regardless. Air show. Air show, yeah. Lou says the game is like family. It won't let you go no matter how long you've been away. That's a bit of an ominous sentence, but it also nicely mirrors how complicated and weird life can be, especially in a twisty, dark little place called Essex County. The next thing I wanted to discuss may seem simple, but it's this book's status as a comic book. I looked this up. I knew it had been up for Canada Reads and I watched some of the YouTube clips of that year's competition. If you don't know what Canada Reads is, a bunch of celebrity figures from a wide array, like politics, education, arts and music, etc. They get together, they each choose a book to champion as Canada Reads Book of the Year. And then they sit down at a round table and they argue it out. One book is eliminated each week, a little like Survivor. This has been running for a few years now. This was nominated by Sarah Quinn from the excellent band Tegan and Sarah and it got eliminated in the first round because it was a comic book. Now they didn't say it like that, but no one engaged with the themes of the book other than Sarah. It was all these people saying that a comic book can't win because it's actually not worth the same as a novel. It just isn't. People say this, they do. It's awful, it's garbage. It's so judgmental and stupid. Sarah Quinn tried her hardest. She defended it really well. She was like, do you think looking at a painting in the MoMA is stupid? Why is this stupid? Chester Brown's Louis Riel is on display in the AGO. It is art because it took you an hour and a half to read means you're reading it wrong not that it was written wrong. She was wonderful. A million applauses to her. Ugh, it really bugs me how comic books just get shit on by older people, especially. I mean, young people too, don't get me wrong. Ugh, it makes me sad. But then if you read Essex County and you read the first part, Jeff Lemire sort of knows this is coming and he makes sure to put in a defense of the comic book genre right in the book itself, which is wonderful. In the first volume, our protagonist is Lester. His mom has died. He's living with his uncle Kenny. And though Kenny tries, he's not used to raising children and they have a bit of a tense relationship. And Lester's very lonely. He dresses up like a superhero because what else is he gonna do? The idea is that comic books for Lester give him an escape from his sad life. They function really beneficially for a dude in need of an escape. What I really like though is Jeff Lemire's emphasis on birds as a big symbol. This is so English major, like what does the bird mean? But it's valid because they're all over the place in this comic book. And Lemire uses them as like supernatural, timeless, angelic creatures. If you've heard of the painter Alex Coville, he does something very similar with birds in his paintings. They know more than we do. Just trust him, they do. So this is the bird. It's all over the place. It's in every single story and it symbolizes anything from stability, goodness, love, clarity, etc. And there's the bird again. I could show you a million panels like this. This bird is everywhere. So what does this bird mean? Basically what I think is that this bird is the gutters of the comic made into an entity. Comics 101 time. What is a gutter? A gutter is the dividing line between panels in a comic book. If we're on this page, it's the little in-between space here, here that divides the panels. Boop, 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 boop. Those are gutters. The neat thing about gutters is that they can cover a single second. They can cover a period of years. They can cover entire continents. The graphic artist can shift a million ways to Sunday within the space of the gutter. And that's how the bird functions as a gutter because it's a transformative space, a transitional space. When the bird comes, you know, we're going into the past, into the future. We're switching perspectives, etc. So by taking the gutter by necessity, an empty space, right? A blank space between times and turning that into a presence, a bird that can fly, that is beautiful, that symbolizes stability, clarity, goodness. It's like Lemire is arguing that transitions and in between times, those are how we connect in the end. And the bird is everywhere in this book. It threads connection all over the place. It fills those empty spaces. That's what it does. To conclude, my favorite arc in Essex County is how Lester starts the book aligned with these chickens that he has to tend, flightless birds. So you see Lester over here and then you see the bird and the two are aligned as pretty connected, right? They're framed in the same way. We're meant to associate them with each other. Basically, Lester is aligned with a flightless bird, something grounded, something that 
is kind of stuck and sad. Like this chicken's in a cage. It's not excellent, right? But as the book continues, we see less and less of those grounded chickens. And that bird that I pointed out is in flight more and more of the time. As Essex County comes into view as a really interconnected space where everyone is related to each other in some form of intimacy, the bird is constantly in flight. And it's not a coincidence that at the very end of the book, we see a family tree outlining how everyone is connected. And then we see the last panel, that bird flying. So just to show you, here's the family tree, and then only a few pages later, here's how we end. The bird is flying up, up, and away, and there it is. It's a really wonderful, expansive, hopeful way to end a saga filled with as much sadness as Essex County is. It's actually a very optimistic ending. On the whole, I really, really liked Essex County. Um, I have one big criticism, and this will surprise absolutely none of you. My bar for women was really low after I read Jeff Lemire's six-part series, Sweet Tooth. It was justified, again, in Essex County. Seriously, you would think that this is like a dystopian society where women are either all dead or like left. Seriously, the first two volumes, they're all dead. They're all dead. The third volume is entirely about a woman, which is nice, but okay, cool. Just so you know, a billion percent dudes up until volume three. So that's it. Hockey, Birds in Flight, Comic Books, Canada. Ladies, I'm out y'all. Thanks for Hello Hemlocking with me. So stay tuned for the other lovely Hello Hemlockers opinions on this book in the next few weeks. Bye guys.